I'm here with Annika Connor, who is a contemporary romantic artist. She also runs a company called Active Ideas Productions and came out with a book of curated art called Point Suite recently. Um, and I have her here today to chat a little bit about how artists can monetize their work. Hi, Annika. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your work. I'm a contemporary romantic painter, as you said. I work primarily in oil paints or watercolor. You mentioned something about how in art school, there was kind of this idea that artists need to either be poor and hungry or have some other source of income. One of the things that interests me is um, the very real need to make a living. As an artist, I had to figure this out because I didn't want to be a starving, broke artist. I wanted to live in New York City and um, I wanted to reach a large audience with my work. So selling, exhibiting became very important mm -hmm. in order to do this. Um, as I jumped through the hoops and started to figure out the ins and the outs of the art world, I found a lot of answers to questions that I really what, regret not having um, been addressed during my education. And when I had the opportunity to speak to other artists, I wanted to enable them to know these answers. The art world has a misconception mm -hmm. that um, you have to, as you said, um, have wealthy patronage or um, trust fund to survive, or if you don't, then you're the starving artist. However, the arts is a unique situation where there's no income cap on growth. So arts, painting, filmmaking, fashion, music, these businesses have loads of different opportunities, but so many people are taught that not to think that way. We're seeing a lot of schools defunding the arts um, because like STEM careers are more valued. So what do you think that we could do to increase funding to arts programs? Um, rather than cutting education and focusing on teaching children to become engineers and technicians, there's so many advances in technology today that so many of the jobs which are thought of as being great stable income jobs might be autonomized with new advances in app technology or web development. Mm -hmm. You're already seeing this in um, the fact that there's the need for a web designer right. is getting greatly diminished with platforms such as Squarespace mm -hmm. or WordPress. Um, so I think that the need for imaginative, innovative thought is going to be dramatically increased in the future. And if we're only teaching children the building blocks of logical, linear thinking, we're shutting down half of their brain. Mm -hmm. we're, in, we're not teaching them to think outside of the box. We're literally teaching them only to think within a confined structure. I find it horrible that I went to one of the best art schools in the world, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. I loved my education, I loved my school, but I graduated in 2002 and I was taught relatively nothing about running a business. Now you can take all the romantic notions aside from painting. I'm essentially a small business owner that's creating a product that has a very real need to sell that product. This is not romantic. This is not artistic, but it's practical. And if I'm going to be able to survive as an artist, I need to know these practical ways to implement, implement my growth. Mm -hmm. Completely, that makes a lot of sense. Do you think that the culture of art needs to change in order for more artists to make money across the board? Well, I think like any industry, mm -hmm. survival of the fittest is always going to be true. Mm -hmm. So, um, the most talented, the ones who've had the best opportunities, who's perhaps have met the right people, um, who have proven their track record of success, rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And I think that's okay. Um, I do think that certain elements of the way the art world 
is today could change to enable things to be um, more fair for the artist. Um, a really concrete example of that is um, there are currently a lot of tax loopholes mm -hmm. which don't really support the artist. So if an artist wants to donate some of their work to charity, the only amount that I could deduct would be the cost of my paint and the cost of my material. Hmm. Now, if you were a collector and you wanted to donate a painting that was valued at $6,000 to a charity of your cause, you would get a $6,000 tax write-off. This doesn't really seem fair. Um, there's also quite a lot of... Um, uh, mm, how do I phrase this? Artists aren't always benefiting from benefiting from the secondary market. Right. So auction houses aren't always um, beneficial to artists. The escalation of price value is astronomical when a painting is sold and resold multiple times, often during the artist's lifetime. There's been a move to. Um, give artists a percent of that sale mm -hmm. and I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. The prices are increasing in value because of the career that the artist has made and the success. Why shouldn't the artist get a cut of that? Right. Um, but also the artist's estate should get a cut of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and these, these things need to change a little bit. You mentioned in your Art Talk book tour promoting your new book, Point Sweet, that arts pricing tends to be exorbitantly high. And so there's a little bit of elitism in the art world because of this. What do you think are some potential ways to make fine art more accessible? Art is about creation and communication with an audience. Um, it's about how these visual ideas can inspire the imagination and the thoughts in the viewer. And that could be opened up and exposed to a lot larger community. Mm. I think that Britain is doing this really well. In England, the vast majority of museums are free. And having the museums be free makes it so much more accessible. Right now, if you come from a low-income family and you have multiple children and it's $10, $15 a ticket to go to the museum, and you have to pay for yourself and your husband and perhaps a friend and your multiple children, that's a really expensive day. Mm -hmm. Plus transport, getting there, feeding everybody. Mm -hmm. But if it became a free thing that you could do with your family, I think a lot more people would be bringing their children to in cultural institutions. Yeah. And this can be true outside of just um, museums. Mm -hmm. If there was a way that the excess seats at the opera or the ballet mm -hmm. that haven't sold could be opened up to uh, low income uh, pass holders to get a free ticket on the day. Mm -hmm. That'd be marvelous, that'd be amazing. Right. And there's a lot of ways where different arts organizations which are struggling for an audience could connect with a larger audience if they wanted to. For sure. I, I totally think that's a great idea. We should think about that as a city. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you are a great mentor because you have monetized your art in different ways. You've had your art printed on scarves for Shalaks and on tra or greeting cards for Trader Joe's. And I think that also increases accessibility to something that is something that only like very wealthy people could normally afford. Uh, what advice would you have to give artists that are looking to collaborate with bigger companies? Well, my interest in collaborating with um, Shalax mm -hmm. um, stemmed from the fact that I love fashion. And I wanted to create a sort of a fusion between fashion and fine art. And I loved the idea of just being like wrapped up in one of my paintings. But um, it certainly did have the effect of, well, if you couldn't afford an original painting, but you wanted to own um, a, a piece of my art, then you could have a scarf and it could actually stay with you and inspire you and give a little unique edge to your own style at any point in time. Trader Joe's was an um, amazing opportunity. I loved working with them. They did about 40,000 birthday cards. They have 470 stores. So that meant that only a certain amount of cards were in each store, but all across the country, 
um, somebody was picking up a birthday card to give to a friend and um, suddenly my painting was reaching the hands of lots of people who would never walk into a New York art gallery. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun and I really liked the way that as an artist by collaborating with big business I could reach new audiences. I would advise artists that are looking to do this to keep in mind some very practical concerns. First of all, um, it's it's sort of a understood principle of business that every deal is a negotiation. So even when you're working with a big company, don't be afraid to ask for what you want. That having been said, mm -hmm. understand the realities of your position and don't ask for the moon. If it's something that you want to do and you want to reach a new audience, collaborate with this company, and you have no track record of having done anything like this before, take what they're offering and don't ask for a ton more. However, get it in writing, get a good contract, have a good lawyer, make sure that you're not giving away things that you didn't realize you were giving away. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're protecting yourself and having your name attached to the stuff that you're creating. In the case of Shaw Lux, my artist collection with them is Annika Connor by Shaw Lux. So there's a label that comes with each scarf so people know of the collaboration. Or in the case of Trader Joe's, the back of every card had a copyright with my name, the information of the art. Now, are that many people looking at the back of their birthday card wondering who the artists are? Maybe not. But for me, I wanted to have that there so in case one person was inspired by it, they might be able to look up on the internet with this handy dandy Google uh, who I am and, and, and find out a little bit more about my art. Awesome. We're seeing fast fashion kind of take over the industry. Um, companies like H&M Forever 21 are taking things that are very trendy and making them very accessible. And I love fast fashion because I definitely utilize it. Um, but it can be problematic for bigger, higher-end companies. Do you see this happening in the world of fine arts? Well, I don't know that there's quite the same correlation. Um, I, I can only really speak as a painter, but um, there certainly is advances in digital printing today, which have enabled um, archival G-clay printing to be available. That is essentially a digital print of a painting. Mm -hmm. And this is different than the screen printing or etchings or lithography that, that used to be before, where that was its own art object. Um, these become like derivative prints from an existing painting. Um, there are people in the art world that don't like, you know, these sort of G clay printing, but um, I find it a really great way to expose art to, again, a lower price point and a larger audience. Mm -hmm. So I have some um, G clays available um, and some digital prints that I've done, and this um, gives somebody who couldn't necessarily afford a huge $10,000 painting the access to have like quite a large print um, to fill perhaps their office wall or their vacation home or their dorm room um, with a beautiful object. Uh, so that, that's one way that there might be a correlation. There's also an increase in artists collaborating with big brands. So you see um, Gap had this amazing t-shirt series at the same time that um, there was a show at the Guggenheim by a Chinese artist, you, uh, Sai Zhou Quang. Okay. Uh, Gap had this exploding um, heart t-shirt that was collaborating with him. That's so cool. that was a really cool parallel. Um, you certainly see Jeff Koons doing some mm. stuff with HM, right. uh, fast fashion. Mm. Um, and this is a really interesting way because I think a lot more Americans now know who Jeff Koons is right. because of this mainstream collaboration. Awesome. Thank you, Annika, for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about where we can find your work? Absolutely. Thank you for asking. 
AnnikaConnor.com. You can purchase Point Sweet, the uh, art book I just published on Amazon. I also um, have a website for Active Ideas Productions, uh, which is AIProductions.org. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us.